Thanks for joining us as we continue our coverage of the search and rescue operation from a sunken ferry of Korea Southwest. It's Tuesday, April 22nd here in Seoul, and I'm Choi Yusun. We are now well into the seventh day of search and rescue efforts for the victims of those on board the sunken Seolho ferry. The death toll continues to rise, but no news of survivors. We go live now to our Chi Myung-gil standing by at Pengmokhang Harbor, just 20 kilometers away from the accident site. Myung-gil, tell us the latest. Yes, Yusun, the death toll exceeded 100 today, with that the atmosphere at the Pengmokan Harbor has become even grimmer. Family members of the missing who have been camping out here at Harbor have been gathering around the list of victims, trying to match their descriptions with their loved ones. Parents broke down into tears when their child's body was confirmed. Some family members shouted out at reporters saying their privacy should be respected and not to reveal the identities of their sons and daughters. A temporary funeral parlor will be set up here at Pengmokang Harbor, but an exact date for this has not been confirmed. Myungil, it seems families are growing desperate. How are they clinging on to their last strands of hope? Yes, Yusun, the families around here at the Pengmokan Harbor were a lot in despair as dozens of their bodies were transported into the harbor. A mother who lost her daughter burst out in tears while she was attending a Catholic Mass. It seems many people were participating in religious activities, praying for their loved ones. Religious volunteers were here to help people in the time of need, to hopefully help ease some of their pain and sorrow. It's truly heartbreaking. I wake up in the middle of the night as the ferry disaster haunts me. The families of the victims say it's really good to have these kinds of religious services as we can pray and share our support. Uh, we seem to having uh, seem to be having some technical It's not just the families of victims but also Myungil, go ahead. It's not just the families of victims, but also many others who have come to Pengmokang Harbor to share in the pain. This was Shi Myungil reporting live from Pengmokang Harbor. Rescue teams continue their painstaking search of the sunken Seolho ferry for any signs of survivors. They focus their efforts on the third and fourth floors of the ferry and believe most bodies will be found in the ship's cafeteria. And for more details, we go to our Kim Hyun Bin standing by at the Central Disaster and Safety Headquarters on Chindo Island. Hyun Bin, fill us in on the latest. <laughs> Uh, hey, Yusan, the spokesperson said on Tuesday afternoon that the uh, search team had recovered 17 bodies from the third and fourth uh, floor of the vessel today, uh, in, in addition to 23 bodies uh, yesterday. Uh, most of the victims retrieved over the past two days were high school students who were in the ferry's lounge when the vessel capsized. He added that a lot of unrecovered bodies are, are thought to be located in the cafeteria of the vessel as it was breakfast time when the ferry started listing. Uh, that area is going to be the next place divers enter. Uh, today, 239 vessels, 32 aircraft, and over five, 750 divers are deployed for the search operation. Back to you, Yusun. Kambi, the international community is reaching out to help in Korea's time of need. How so? Uh, well, the U.S. Defense Department said Monday that it will dispatch uh, a Navy Savage ship to South Korea to help recover the ferry when the operations get to that stage. Uh, South Korea has not formally requested for the ship, but it's currently being moved from Thailand. Uh, the ship is designed to repair or savage ships crippled in combat anywhere around the world. Uh, the rescue team also successfully dispatched two remotely operated underwater vehicles from the United States for the first time. And three experts from the Netherlands are scheduled to help as well. Uh, Korean authorities have also asked China to borrow barge, barges and cranes. Uh, this has been uh, Kim Young bin reporting live at Central Disaster and Safety Countermeasures Headquarters in Chindo. 
What happened on board the Sewolho ferry right before it capsized? Investigators are still trying to figure that out, but have unlocked one piece of evidence that may help uncover others. A Kim ji reports. For three minutes and 36 seconds after 8.48 Wednesday morning, the tracking record for the Sewolho ferry was apparently not connected and not providing information. But the Ministry of Fisheries has restored the record using data from the Mokpo Automatic Identification System Base Station. It shows nothing in the first 36 seconds, and a ministry official said that the Seoho Ferry could have experienced a blackout during this time. They believe the AIS device might have been disconnected for that period of time, but restored later using emergency batteries. After that missing 36-second period passes, the tracking record shows that the Sewerho ferry has slowly started turning starboard and then abruptly turned 45 degrees. The official says the events probably unfolded after the ship veered suddenly. At the time of the accident, the ferry was traveling at a normal speed of 17 knots and was about to turn the stern 10 degrees heading into a treacherous waterway. The Maritime Ministry added that they need to investigate further to see if the capsize was caused due to the reduced dynamic stability of the vessel. If there was an electrical blackout, it could indicate a defect on the ferry and another possible cause of the accident. Kim ji Arirang News. When the Sewolho ferry first ran into trouble, most of its passengers followed the instructions given to them by the ship's crew and stayed put inside the vessel. This piece of information has confounded foreign maritime experts who say that decision and the indecisiveness on part of the captain and crew likely doomed hundreds on board. Our Yurian has the details. Maritime experts described the announcements on the Seoro ferry instructing people to stay in their rooms at the time of the accident as totally incomprehensible. In 99.9% .9 cases, the crew is on top of it. They are well trained and they are able to evacuate the ship in plenty of time. The retired Commodore says it is unacceptable that the captain completely failed in his duties to take control during the crucial moments after the accident. Key decisions should be made within the captain's mind within five to ten minutes. As soon as he gets a report from all departments of the ship and assesses how much damage is done to the vessel itself. Locks show that the captain of the Seoro ferry, Lee jun Suk, delayed evacuation for at least 30 minutes after the ship began to capsize. Others say the announcement telling people to stay where they were actually made the situation worse. Mario Vitone, a former U.S. Coast Guard maritime accident investigator, says if those announcements were not made, the passengers would have gone to the deck to see what was going on. That Allen, the former head of the U.S. Coast Guard, also says common sense dictates that when a situation is deteriorating, the crew needs to give up on trying to save the ship and pour efforts into saving the passengers. Yurian, Arirang News. The cause of this tragic sinking is currently under investigation. The possibility of the ferry hitting a submerged rock or drastically changing direction at an angle of over 90 degrees has already been ruled out. The focus now shifts to the structure and the loading of the vessel. And for more on this, we now connect to our Song ji standing by at the news center. ji what's the latest uh, evidence that's telling us uh, what's ha what happened to the vessel? Well, Yusun, it turns out that the revenue from shipping cargo was a cash cow for the company, which was suffering from operating losses in the slumping shipping industry. According to an audit report of Chongyajin Marine Company, its cargo profits continued to rise, eventually exceeding passenger shipping revenue. That amounted to some 19 million U.S. dollars in 2013, up more than 70 percent from four years earlier. On the other hand, revenue from transporting passengers had been dropping. Tourism experts say it has to do with the recent rise in low airfare operators that now fly from most major cities on the peninsula to Jeju Island. Chongyajin had been operating four lines, two of which had been traveling between Incheon and Jeju Island. All of the company's operations, however, have been suspended since the Seoul ferry disaster last week. Prosecutors have imposed travel bans on 30 additional officials related to the Chongyajin Marine Company and the Ocean's Ministry 
is currently looking into revoking the ferry operator's shipping business license. Well, aside from the commercial cargo, water was also a critical factor in the sinking, apparently. How so? For that, let's take a look at the layout of the Seoul ferry on the screen. If you look at the structure of the ship, the lowest level houses the engine and the ballast tank, where water for balancing the vessel must be loaded before departure. The company had expanded its cabin capacity to allow for more passengers, and authorities have approved that renovation under one condition. That the company increase the amount of water in the tank to secure its balance. The Seoul Ferry can only load cargo of less than a thousand tons and must load balancing water of two thousand tons due to renovations which elevated the ship's center of gravity by half a meter. Now, this, according to inspection data released by opposition lawmaker Kim Myung Lok today, but over three thousand six hundred tons of cargo, including one hundred eighty vehicles, were on board the sunken ferry. Whether the operator abided the recommendation is now under question, since more water on board means more fuel is needed for the 6,800-ton vessel, and fuel, of course, costs money. And it's not a stretch to think the cash-strapped company may have cut corners to maximize its profits. Another piece of evidence that supports this theory is that the ship sank upside down, suggesting there was more air in the bottom of the level than the vessel, uh, the water in the ballast tank. Chisan, it seems that it may be difficult to prove now that the Seoul Ho ferry has gone down more than 20 meters below sea level. Search and rescue operations do continue, though. What's the latest with that? And for that, take a look inside the cabin of the ferry, where rescue teams are now focusing most of their efforts. The third and fourth floors are where the most passengers were expected to be present at the moment of the accident, between 8 and 9 a.m. last Wednesday morning, as it was breakfast time. Divers are also searching the fourth floor of the ferry, where the cabins for most of the Tanwon High School students were located. But at this point, the vessel lies at an almost 90-degree angle from this floor plan, after sinking upside down to touch the ground underwater. Meanwhile, a Navy UDT member who participated in the rescue operation is being treated for the symptoms of divers' disease, which include temporary paralysis and an extreme headache. He's recovering in a decompression chamber at the moment. Back to you. The Seoul Ho ferry disaster has raised serious questions about safety awareness here in Korea. Authorities have vowed to punish those responsible for the accident to the full extent of the law. However, records show that in Korea, those who violate maritime regulations are often get away. Our Connie Lee has more. Coast Guard officials flip over a boat after knocking on it in search of survivors. Seven crew members were found dead in this hit-and-run accident. This happened last year in March in the same waters where the Sewohor ferry incident took place. And just about two weeks ago, authorities caught six crew members under the influence of alcohol steering a boat in the waters around Korea. But even out of the sea waters, more trouble. Last month, authorities found 17 sailors steering ships with illegal licenses. In the past five years alone, here in Korea, about 600 people were found dead or missing from maritime accidents, most of them caused by human error. From 2009 to 2013, there were about 1,400 accidents at sea, and out of those, 82 percent were caused by the crew. Safety violations and negligence were the cause for most of the accidents. Regardless, in those cases, the penalties for the crew would be considered light by most. Most of them were let off with just a warning, while others were suspended from work. Not a single one of the crew members had their licenses revoked. Year after year, light punishments for the many accidents in Korean waters, and now with Korea's biggest maritime accident in decades at the fore, questions are being raised about whether it's finally time to take sea safety more seriously. Connie Lee, Arirang News.
the bodies that have been recovered from the Sewolho ferry are transferred either to hospitals or funeral halls. More are being released to their families today, and our Shin Semin is out at one of the hospitals in Ansan that is receiving bodies. Semin, what's the latest from where you are? Yes, you saw in just a couple of minutes ago another victim, another body has just arrived here at the city of Ansan. Here, um, at Korea University of Ansan Hospital. And uh, I do not have specific details as of now, but I will do keep you updated in the later newscast. Meanwhile, a total of 11 victims has been released from the city of Ansan, including this one right here. A five of those students have been released from this hospital, and right shortly after that, um, six more bodies has arrived, uh, bringing the total up to uh, 11, uh, seven. As more victims have arrived, more mourners after mourners are visiting the funeral hall to pay their respect. And on Wednesday, 21 more bodies are expected to be released at eight different funeral halls in Ansan. And in a briefing held by the hospital a couple of hours ago, officials here say that they're reviewing the possibility of releasing inpatients depending on their conditions. And this comes as the hospital has been saying that the most of the uh, that most of the patients' physical and mental conditions had improved since they were brought to the hospital the first day. Earlier today, parents of the students made an appeal at the Ansan Office of Education urging for swift rescue operations and also criticizing the media for its indiscriminate reports on this tragic incident. And they also asked for all of society to help them through this very difficult time. While yesterday, representatives of the families asked the authorities to wrap up the ongoing search and rescue operations by this Thursday, and the authorities said they would do their best to meet the deadline. Samin, we hear that memorial altars are being set up in the city of Ansan so people can pay their res last respects to those who have passed away. Yes, that's right. A temporary uh, altar for, for the uh, a ton on high school students and teachers is expected to be ready for tomorrow morning sometime around nine o'clock. Um, a memorial altar is still in the process of being set up here in the Ansan Olympic Memorial Hall about just 10 minutes away from this location and friends and families and relatives will be able to pay their tribute to those who have passed and as the families of the victims wish to hold the memorial altar for all of those who have passed from the city of uh, from the accident. The city of Ansan said t Tuesday that they have decided to build a memorial altar at the Hwarang Recreation Park for all of those who have lost their lives from this incident. And not only here in Ansan, but also in the city of Incheon, from where the Sewalho ferry left the shore, another group memorial altar will be set up at the International St. Mary's Hospital, which is where seven other recovered bodies are being held. And that's all for now. And this has been Shin Min reporting live from Korea University Ansan Hospital. Korean celebrities are doing their part to help the victims of the Sewolho ferry disaster. LA Dodger pitcher Ryu Jin is one of them. He held a special autograph session, Pro proceeds all going to the survivors and families of the deceased. Our Kim Minji has the details. A long line of baseball fans gather in front of Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, where pitcher Yu Jin is signing autographs to raise funds to support the victims of the Seoul ferry disaster. Korean American fans that took part in the event said they wanted to help out in any way they could. It's sad and very depressing. It must be a hard time, but I hope the families do not lose hope. It was a sentiment shared by all who were there. Oh, just devastation towards the families, when, especially when you're talking about such young victims, high schoolers that were on that boat. It's very tragic. Ryu said that he was keeping up with the news out of Korea, adding that his thoughts were with the victims and their families. He also put up a sign on his locker that read Sewar 41614 in tribute. Ryu has already donated 100,000 U.S. dollars through his HJ99 Foundation, earmarked for the Seoul ferry disaster. I'm hoping for good news. Please take care. Other Korean celebrities have also been making donations. Figure skating star Kim Yana gave some $100,000 through UNICEF and tweeted that she prays for a miracle.
A list of actors have also made contributions, big and small, while some have delivered relief goods to the harbor and auditorium where families have been staying. And all this to express one message, that the families and friends of this horrible disaster are not alone in this very difficult time. Kim Min-ji, Airang News. And as our Kim Yan-bin earlier said, with U.S. President Barack Obama scheduled to visit Seoul later this week, Washington has made all of its resources in the region available to Korean authorities and has even offered to help determine the cause of the accident. Our Connie Kim reports. The U.S. remains at the ready to help Korea in this very difficult time. The Pentagon said Monday that the Navy salvage ship USS Safeguard is now sailing to the waters of Korea in case Seoul asks for help with salvage operations once they begin. The U.S. National Transportation Safety Board has also pledged to help investigators determine what caused the ferry to sink if requested. The U.S. Navy ship USS Bunhammer Shar, which was conducting routine patrols in Korean waters last week, is already on the disaster site along with its helicopters. President Barack Obama, who is scheduled to arrive in Seoul for a two-day visit later this week, has pledged full support in the ongoing search and rescue operations. The presidential adviser, Ben Rhodes, said this week during a press briefing that the Seoul ferry disaster will take priority during Obama's trip to Seoul. In addition to the Seoul disaster, President Obama and President Park Geun-hye are also expected to discuss North Korea's nuclear program. Rhodes said the door to dialogue remains open for Pyongyang, so long as the regime is ready and willing to denuclearize. Connie Kim, Arirang News. With President Obama arriving in Seoul this Friday, North Korea is showing signs that it may be preparing for a fourth nuclear test. South Korean Defense Ministry spokesperson Kim Min-seok said Tuesday that increased movement has been detected at the North's Punggye-ri nuclear test site. He added that Pyongyang is at a stage where it could carry out a nuclear test at any time. South Korea and U.S. forces are closely monitoring the situation, and the South's Defense Ministry and the Joint Chiefs of Staff have also set up an integrated crisis management task force to prepare for a possible test. Experts have speculated recently that a fourth nuclear test could be in the works ahead of Obama's visit to Tokyo and Seoul this week. And on the eve of U.S. President Barack Obama's visit to Japan, a group of nearly 150 lawmakers paid respects to the controversial Yasukuni War Shrine in Japan for the country's annual spring festival. The group, composed of legislators from several parties and at least one cabinet minister, made the visit on Tuesday, drawing a strong rebuke from both Korea and China. Uh, Korea's foreign ministry spokesperson described the trip as deplorable and an anachronistic act that undermines stability in the region. Japan's chief cabinet secretary Yoshihide Suga said earlier that the visits were an individual matter of personal religious freedom and not something the government should interfere with. The weather on Chindo continues to be cooperative. And for details, we now go to our Kim Bo-gyung standing by at the Weather Center. Bo-gyung, what's the latest? Well, Yusan, as you mentioned, rescue operations are proceeding with few difficulties thanks to the mild weather. Well, today through Thursday is when the speed of tidal currents go down to their slowest. On average, tidal currents moved at a rate of about 2.8 meters per second, but during a neap tide that will fall to a meter per second. Well, currently it's about 13.4 degrees on Chindo with misty conditions. Now, strong winds are blowing at a rate of about 7 
7.3 meters per second, but that is not an issue as waves remain calm at 0.6 meters. The speed of tidal currents will go down to as slow as 0.5 meters soon at around 7.31 p.m. Tomorrow there will be four such periods, so operations should proceed with few difficulties during those hours. Other than that, uh, for the weather outlook on Jindo for tomorrow looks to be more moderate than today. Wave heights will fall to half a meter and wind speed at four to seven meters per second. That's all the weather updates I have for Chindo at this hour, and I'll be back with more after eight. Thanks, Pogyang, and that's all we have for you at this hour. But stay with us for more on day seven of the sunken ferry search efforts on our next newscast in just about half an hour.